So today I have kind of a treat for you in the sense that I, everything that I've done has been trying to give you greater context in what's happening in Ukraine. So Greg Carey is with me, and Greg has been to Ukraine more times than uh, maybe he can even count. Uh, and, and he's on the ground, he's working with Ukrainians, and he's going to help you understand and process and see through their eyes and help you see not just the horrors of what's going on, on the ground, but the good things that are happening too. So I'm going to introduce Greg. He's going to give you some of his backstory, and then we're going to get into it. Greg, thank you for joining me. Thank you, Dr. Garrett, and I appreciate your invitation. I'm, you know, I'm excited. We were connected through Johnny Pierce, mm -hmm. and that's just the way God works through, mm -hmm. I believe, divine connections. And I, I'm very thankful. So, yes, let's let's be concise and jump in. I began in Russia actually in 1994 as a 21-year-old kid over there teaching a Bible class for a month. Little did I know that basically. 30 years here soon later, I would still be working in that region of the world. I speak Russian fluently. I thought I would just go for a month and teach some Bible. I grew up enamored with the Soviet Union and the history of it and just wanted to get there desperately. And, and there was a way made. So I, I'm, I'm there. I'm teaching. I have 200 Ukrainians I'm actually training there and 100 Russians. And I began to travel throughout the Russian regions and the next thing I know, we fast forward to 1998, I'm invited to Ukraine. The first place I go is Slavuta, Ukraine, which has been bombed. And from there, God just did a divine connection. And for the last 26 years, I've spent over three years of my life inside Ukraine, ministering humanitarian aid. But I believe in, you know, divine order and God just established my history there, I think, for such a time as this. Mm -hmm. 26 years ago, I had no idea. I, of course, I'd be sitting here with you today and we'd be talking about a war. So after mm -hmm. the after COVID hit the U.S., and I live in Pennsylvania, I have a wife, I have three children, and they're so supportive of all the work that we do and, and a part of it, not just supportive, but a part of it. Mm -hmm. But I started to do a little broadcasting for our church because we were locked down. I work in about 38 nations. I was unable to travel. So I was trying to do some YouTube stuff. And the next thing I know, I'm actually interviewing my ministry uh, best friend that we've worked together for 25 years in Ukraine. His name is Jenya Matsutsa. You'll probably see him on a video we'll share in a moment. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about the Russian troop buildup on the eastern border at that time, about 150,000 troops. And at the very moment we were talking, the air alarm went off for the first time and a missile hit. And he said, Greg, we were just hit with a missile. Wow. War started. Yes, sir. Well, that's it's, so that's something. And now I, I most of us remember about what happened at that time. I remember a week before sitting in a cafeteria talking with my professor buddies, so, just talking, nah, I don't think Putin's gonna do anything. And then I was in an academic conference when it hit, and I'm like, wait, he did Holy what? Moly. And and you know something had changed. A a a, 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 a switch had been flipped in the world. And something big had just happened, like big, like we just haven't seen mostly in our lifetime, other than, say, the collapse of the former Soviet Union or 9-11. I mean, but something big has happened. So that got my attention just like this got yours. So what happens next? You, so the you're talking to him. Yeah, we're talking. And, and at that moment, I could see the fear in his eyes, to be quite honest. And he is a he's a he's a powerful man. Uh, it, we run the front lines, we're under shelling, we're under bombing, we're under cruise missiles, we're in tanks. We do all of that all the time, even now. But I could see the fear. And instantly I felt personally attacked because hmm. I've traveled the world with this guy and all of my team members there in Ukraine. So at that moment, I said, Zhenya, and that's his short name. His name is Yevgen, Yevgeny Matsutsa, but Zhenya. I said, Zhenya, okay, I don't know what's going on. This is shocking to me. I was in tears. I said, but we will support Ukraine from this day forward until we have victory because this is the beginning of a war. Mm -hmm. We finished. People were like in shock. And Jania then calls me and says, man, what just happened? I said, I don't know. You were just attacked. I said, listen, we'll stream every day and we'll just we'll just try to help people. So we honestly thought seven to 10 days and mm -hmm. then Putin would take his tanks home. But man, we were very incorrect. It was just a few days later that you can remember the horrific picture when Russia made a fatal mistake 
um, in that in the early days, and I've talked with many Ukrainian military about this, if they had attacked Kharkiv the way they attacked Kiev, they would have Kharkiv today. But they didn't. It was, it was a, whether it was on purpose or not, it was a mistake. But they came into that way, and they were coming into Bucha and Irpin and Gostomol, which I've been all over that area helping people. And if you remember in the early days of the war, there was a picture with a young man on a bicycle that was killed in the streets laying on his side. Mm-hmm. That's one of my personal friends. Wow. It's one of Zhenya's personal friends. From there, it's gloves off. We are now committed 100% to fight for truth, to, to help share the truth, to help civilians, to help military. We, we, do, we do so much translation of Russian and Ukrainian um, videos to help the world in English understand what's going on. And it was typically, it was basically, you know, a couple of weeks later that the fascist Nazi story began and the propaganda, which Russians are the masters of propaganda, bar none, period. America's not close. Ukraine's not even on the map. They're the masters of propaganda. So they started this narrative of fascists and Nazis. That's moment number two, gloves off. I've given 26 years of my life to this nation. I have been in every region. I have been in every city. These are not Nazis. President Zelensky is not a Nazi. President Zelensky does not have billions of dollars in the Canary Islands. This is an actor who literally, as a joke, was beginning his political aspirations. The next thing you know, he finds himself as the president of Ukraine fighting not only a propaganda war, fighting a corruption war, and now fighting a war against the invaders of Russia. Mm-hmm. Now, that that's now, but... Hold on, I got to stop I, you there. I think okay. his media savvy was absolutely the right guy for being able to answer back against Russian propaganda in a, in a meaningful way because he understands what the narrative is. What, tell me what you think there. Uh, are you kidding? He's... Ro- he's Okay, for you and I, we're going to be happy here. Others won't like this. And listen, I I don't go, I try not to go into the politics of who likes who and who doesn't like. I want to get truth out for Mm -hmm. everybody. I'm a truth hunter. But he is very Ronald Reagan-ish in his ability to communicate off of the cuff, to to push in humor when humor is needed to to ease the atmosphere. And, And the other thing is, his command of the English language, which he is now using more, mm-hmm. other presidents did not have English to that level. Other candidates right. didn't either. And it's it's very important that this world understand in English because very few understand Ukrainian and, and, and the Russian languages, right. of course. All right, so, I don't mean to divert you, but keep, No, keep you going. didn't divert me. I, I, I'm, I'm passionate, man. This is my life now. So I'm working in Ukraine. And the next thing I know, I'm finding myself in the Orange Revolution. And that's when Yushchenko was poisoned. If you guys remember all of that history. And he absolutely was poisoned. He went to Austria for treatment. This was the beginning. Yeah. I was wearing the orange ties. I was in Kiev. I was in Khmelnytsky. I was in uh, Nepropetrovsk at that time, or Nepro now. We're, we're doing all these meetings. And I was invited to a TV station. And they said, all we want to do is hear your opinion. We know you work here. Your opinion on the Orange Revolution. I wore an orange tie, and I was there talking to them. Made some connections there. Still working in Ukraine. Fast forward, 2013, 2014, I find myself in Maidan. The propaganda war that was so horrible for Maidan. Mm -hmm. The Ukrainians were peacefully protesting Mm -hmm. in that square, Maidan Square. And if you look up Maidan Square, you look right up the hill to the, it's called the Hotel Ukraina or the Hotel Ukraine. And without a doubt, 100% Russian snipers were there and they began indiscriminately killing people. My, uh, Zhenya, my buddy, he was there serving as a medic, grabbing people that were being shot with sniper rifles and working to save their lives. At that point, this 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 propaganda phase begins mm-hmm. to a new level. And you start to hear about separatists, and you start to hear about Crimea. What many people don't understand is the reason a lot of that was happening was because the Ukrainians could see that a lot of their higher-ranking government administrative people, like a Yanukovych, 
mm-hmm. was completely in the pocket of Vladimir Putin. Mm-hmm. At that point in time, Ukraine, really without even the Rada's approval, it was a presidential act, gave Russia a 25-year lease on the naval base in Simferopol, and, or Sevastopol, in Crimea. That was another domino that fell. Then after that, that's 2014. Then we begin to hear 2015, 2016, the separatist stuff. Okay, there's people that want to separate. And, and it's it's not it's not Russians. Okay, these are just Ukrainians that 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 are are ethnic Russians and they want to separate. We started to hear about that in the Lugansk and the Donetsk region specifically. In 2016, I find myself in Dnipro. Um, I'm sorry, in, in Donetsk. <laughs> And I was actually on one of the last flights into Donetsk before the war, the, the next phase of war started with the separatists, the Russian-backed separatists. Mm-hmm. The Russians were on the ground. Mm-hmm. The troops were there. And they were disguised, but 100% they were there. And, and people may ask, well, how do you know that? Because I have a very dear personal friend that was taken captive by them and tortured and beaten. In Donetsk, in the city administrative building, he's a Ukrainian. He served in the Red Army. He knows. And he says, Greg, these are Russians. These are Russians. And he got out. They, they beat the snot out of him and let him go. At that point, you had to surrender all your mobiles, all your cell phones. Yes, this is back in 2016. We came in on an airplane. We escaped on a car. He escaped on a car. At that point, it, we knew this is Russia doing this. Sure. So at that point, I'm I'm once again, that's what I consider like a phase three. I'm all Wait, in. Before you get to phase three, let, let's just talk about this. I find it fascinating that Putin always talks about this coup, this American coup of the Maidan. And without any evidence other than saying the name Victoria Newland, but without mm-hmm. any evidence. But he was OK with uh either Russians or Yanukovych uh, having his people shoot at innocent Ukrainians. He was okay with fomenting rebellion or revolution or creating this in Donbass and in Crimea. He was okay with invading, having a a fake election that couldn't possibly have been that high. He was okay with all these other things, but points to that one as if, yeah, I mean, it's, it's nonsense. Okay. Keep going. Well, no, it's a, it's a perfect place to interject this. Do you see the image there? Um, He's okay with this. Okay. This is Nipro. Wow. I was there when this happened. And if you click, this is children. This is grandmothers. This is fathers. This is not a military target. This is a residential building that was leveled. I was right down the street from it when it happened. If you click Nipro 2. And you can see behind me. All we're trying to do is get the truth out. And um, our friends here at Security Services um, gave us permission. We have all the documents we need to get it done. And we're here to tell the truth. This is the building that was struck. Um, we're now we're at 35 people that have lost their life, over 60 wounded. And what's really interesting about this is that directly behind us here is the Nipro River. And... Uh, Less than a mile away, maybe half a mile, is the most important bridge crossing the river. Jane and I were discussing as we were coming down here to this that if I was a military guy and I was against Ukraine, I would take that bridge out. Instead of 100 Mm -hmm. missiles all around Ukraine, I would take that bridge out. It would cut off all supplies coming from the southern region across that huge river, which is a mile wide right here. But instead of doing that, we're going to destroy a nine-story building. We're going to kill over 35 people. I assume by this point, at the clean rate, they probably have removed all the dead bodies. And they're working. And it's very solemn right here. It's very quiet. Look over here, Jacob. You can see the trucks lined up to clean. Mm-hmm. Um, Everything is orderly. This would be like a 911 moment. If you look down here behind me, you can see all of the, the police and security in their yellow mm-hmm. jackets. And then, of course, all of the security. But the, the interesting thing is, Ukraine is restoring this instantly. You're getting an instant restoration. 
Um, it just shows the heart and the integrity and the character of the nation of Ukraine. And I don't know. I, I remember 9-11 in the U.S. Of course, that was the, the Twin Towers and our world changed. But something like this in this war, Day 327, this is one of the larger events where a lot of civilian lives have been lost. So, There you have it, folks. We're here and we work very hard to tell the truth. And that's the truth. Dr. Gerdes, when you when you see something like that and you're there, it, it's it's indescribable. Yeah, I can I can imagine. I mean, and this is why I'm having you here so that you can bring the context uh, the, on the ground that that people need to understand. I, it's, I, I can't imagine that people would be as as susceptible to going. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's not our problem if they've experienced what you've experienced and seen what you've seen. You stated before I asked you to show that picture and video that Putin's okay with this. Mm -hmm. And that's the fact. Mm -hmm. And I would even take it a step further and say this. If nations are still supporting this dictator, mm -hmm. then they're okay with it. Mm -hmm. Because it is clear right. what is happening here. And if you support something through trade, then you support the narrative mm -hmm. of what they're doing. Yep. And, you know, as we all often say on the streams, follow the money. And unfortunately, <laughs> Dr. Gerdes, I could sit here for 24 hours and show you nonstop video of all these places. We were down the road coming from this and we were in Pavlograd and we were staying in our hotel and an Iskander missile came in right beside us, blew us out of the bed. And I can remember wow. it was like slow motion. I, I was thrown up out of the bed. And as I'm coming down through the air, I, I hit Zhenya on the shoulder. I said, man, we've been hit. And he woke up. We immediately got up. The building shook. We got dressed. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but this was, I was given this from Zaluzhny. Um, and, and the military brass there, this is actually a military card that allows me free access to come and go wherever I please block post. It doesn't matter. I'm, I'm fully, they see that it's let's go. Um, so we immediately, I had that pass at that time, which straight to the impact site and we're the first ones there other than the regional governor. And I walk up to the regional governor and Jane is with me and there's, she, she's like, in tears. And I, I, I walk up and I'm speaking Russian to her. They're all speaking Russian in that region. I speak Russian to her and I say, you know, I'm here. I'm sorry, but I'm going to help you share the truth and do anything we can to help. She goes, go do whatever you want. Please share the truth. Nine children just lost their lives. And I walked over. It's on my YouTube channel in the shorts. I literally go over to the impact crater. Um, 40 feet across and 25 feet deep yeah. and all the homes destroyed and, and we want to share the truth. So yeah, it, Putin's okay with this and he, he can disguise it any way he wants. He can do whatever he wants, but he is a murderer mm -hmm. and he is a dictator and the world Unfortunately, in fact, on my live stream coming up, Jane and I are working on it right now. We're going to be talking about the failure of world leadership currently. We know that in the United States, we're having a lot of troubles, you know, down party lines. And now for the next batches of aid for Ukraine, you know, when you come up to a situation in the world like this, whether it be 9-11, whether it be the war in Ukraine, you know, at some point, good versus evil has to stand for itself and stand right versus my political view versus my political view right is yeah. right I, I i agree i'm right there and not not you. not I, not conservative right being I, I want them to get it sorted out i'm confident that they will but they're playing I, too. The, I am too they're, they're playing the political game in the meantime which is slowing things down which is unfortunate but i'm confident that they will get there i, I yes. as sure as i'm sitting here they'll get there um because it's even worse to have Putin win on their watch than it is to try to get what they're trying to get 
out of any at any rate. I, I I'm not worried about the political thing. It'll come. It'll just come too slow. Like everything else here so far has just been too slow. So, okay. At any yeah, rate, and, 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 but my concern for the slow. Um, for example, tonight I'm going to be talking about uh, Bulgaria sending a hundred uh, M ones, and they're not coming now. And, and it's right. Yeah, it's almost as if the game is, we were talking about it, the game is, we're going to appear like we're going to help. We're going to send some aid. We're going to send some money. We're going to send a few leopards. We're going to send some of Abrams. And, and I, I, I have to look into this, but the U.S. sending M1s to Morocco. Okay, there's no war in Morocco. We're, this is a break or make moment. Vladimir Putin. Xi Jinping, mm -hmm. the regime in Iran, rocket boy in Pyongyang, mm -hmm. they want a new world order that right. moves from Europe and the West to the East. And their view of the world is completely opposite of all that the West holds dear and true. That's why I've been hammering it from the beginning on sanctions. Okay. You can sanction Vladimir Putin until the cows come home. They have moved to a war economy. Additionally, if you look at the map of sanctions, you have the United States and you have basically European nations and a few scattered here and there. Here's the bottom line. China's not sanctioning. India's not sanctioning. Asia's not sanctioning. Latin America, South America. So, okay, a dollar may not come clearly from Europe, although they still come, but or ruble. But they got the rest of the world to get them from. And I don't understand why people can't get this. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, it's uh, pretty incredible to watch just how who's lining up on which side of the equation. Um, since I have you, I want to mm -hmm. spend the time with you on context. So what else can you help us see on the ground in Ukraine? This is what we do every day. So this is one of my team members here. We have a nonprofit NGO handing out food packs. We deliver them nonstop. But if you see the soldier back there, mm -hmm. so our organization, we only work with military, even mm -hmm. when we're helping civilians. And right. the reason for that is because we want to stay alive. <laughs> Many people have went in right. and they, they mean well. Even some organizations in Ukraine or others that have come from abroad and they want to come in and they want to help. Most of them can't get to the front like we do because they do not have the connections or the trust, which could take me down an entire different rabbit hole. Well, I'll just touch and maybe we could hit it some future time. But Ukraine has to fight a serious war with collaborators and Russians that are dressing up in Ukrainian uniforms. Wow. And... Uh, we have been through block posts and checkpoints where, okay, when you go through the, I'm going to give you guys some inside information now. So it's, it's not super inside, but when you go through a checkpoint and you're authorized to be there as you're supporting military or you're going to evacuate people or you're bringing food, um, you can run one of two ways. You can run the authorized NGO or non-governmental organization way and you run with the proper documents or you run military and you run with a password. The password changes by region or by city constantly. And if you know the password, it's in Ukrainian, many times very difficult Ukrainian words, a part of the password that Russians who learn Ukrainian would not be able to accentuate properly. It's right. very interesting. Yes. <laughs> and so we come up to the blog post and Zhenya will start talking in Ukrainian. And during his talk with the guards, that word comes through. They then have five us. We Darovia. That's the greeting you give all soldiers in Ukrainian. Health to you. Let's go. You, of course, everybody knows Slava Ukraina, Geroem Slava, which means glory to Ukraine and glory to the heroes. Um, and you go on through. But we came, we were coming into one block post, and the guy's talking to Zhenya. And Zhenya gives the password. And we go through, and Zhenya goes, Greg, he's not Ukrainian. Hmm. He's not Ukrainian. We turned around and went back. He was a collaborator. Wow. And Zhenya knew it from the inflection in his voice. Wow. So this is how serious it is down there. So when you saw us giving aid there, you saw the soldier. 
we do everything with military. So that guy who was helping us with communications, radio, blog post, he's on the radio where everywhere we drop, we're within typically meters to a few kilometers from the Russian positions that people are trapped there still to this day. And we have to go in when we know our best opportunity is to not be shelled. Yes, we've been shelled. Yes, we have drones fly over our head all the time. Yes, all of that happens. Yes, we have to be behind buildings and we're in full body armor because of snipers. We're that close. But we're with the military and they're on the radio going, okay, we can go now. We can go now. The shelling just happened. There's going to be a 90-minute window. We know. Let's go. And we fly in and we fly out. So we try to do it with safety. And you asked earlier, how did your family let you do that? That's another reason. Um, we work We work with really good guys. So that's that's what it looks like there. That's every day, our team on the ground, 24-7 running aid. So I'll, I'll, let me pre, uh, give a little intro here. I know it. Look, I, I'm sleeping there. I'm waking up. We had tried to upload a stream. We run with Starlink. We're always providing Starlinks to the soldiers. And now a lot of drones and a lot of drone components, which is incredible how this operates. But I tried to upload a file during the night. It didn't happen because when I'm in Ukraine and I will be back in Ukraine, I travel there January the 2nd. I'll be there January, February, March running the front lines. I stream live every day, every day. Because it's the opportunity to get the mass, the most amount of truth out. So I could not get the stream uploaded. So my family and friends that are expecting it to be there started blowing my phone up. Okay, are y'all alive? Are you okay? The stream didn't hit. So this is Genia coming up filming me. I said, man, it didn't upload. But right here, we're on the front line. And just for context, folks, this is a Ukrainian home. It was a grandmother and grandfather. Mm-hmm. They were evacuated and they gave their home to soldiers on the front line and right. says, you live in our home. You stay in our home. You eat our food. You burn our wood. You take care of yourselves because you're fighting for us. And if you don't live here, they go destroy our home. It's your home. Give. This happens every day on these front lines. It's not this evil. Oh, the Ukrainian soldiers coming in, taking over homes and Ukraine's uh, bombing their own people. Baloney. Baloney. This is real Ukraine. So I'm sleeping on a Ukrainian granny's sofa. I'm surrounded by military. You sure? Before I show the video, I want you to tell the audience, and I'll try to put a bar on the bottom with this as Mm -hmm. well, where to find you at on YouTube at Greg Terry Experience. Experience. Yes, sir. Greg Terry Experience. G-R-E-G-T-E-R-R-Y Experience. Yes, sir. Yes, but I, I'm pretty sure now if they just start typing Greg Terry experience in the search bar on YouTube, they'll find it and um, they'll see my mug there. Okay. All right. Here we go with the video. Yes, everything's okay. Sleeping under a blanket. Bring me my AKs. I didn't get any better than that. Go with my. There's the military guy's weapons surrounded by AKs. So my my point being there, and I just want people to see it. Um, when we're embedded with soldiers, and and we work very closely with um, the Azov, you can't get that patch anywhere. Mm-hmm. That's personally exchanged with me. We also work with the Wolf Pack. That was the Wolf Pack there. Um, we work with the ninety fifth. We work with Crack uh, Kraken, and we work. Right now, we we have a very good relationship down on the Zaporizhia line where we work with the guys that are actually taking Robitni. And if taken Robitni, it's our best push. If you remember, and I know we don't want to talk technicals today, but Ukraine did establish a bankhead on the left side of the river, had about 300 soldiers there. They've now had to back up from that position. This is firsthand information. Mm -hmm. Russia has taken that position again. However, Ukraine accomplished their goal. They established it. They've put things into position there. Those soldiers that did those, that's also our our guys, our mm-hmm. team, because they, they came across the river from Taginka, where we do lots of work in Taginka. And they're incredible soldiers. So this is what it's like when you're there with them directly on the front. Now, I'm going to give a precursor on this. This was last um, fall when I was there running the aid. And this... I. Okay, let me tell people where this is at. This is right down near Nipro River, Harrison region. 
brutal, brutal battles. And I'm here and we're embedded with this military group here. They are a drone division and they were special forces. There's 13 of them there. We're having coffee with them. We were playing with guns, playing with the drone things you do at a war zone, playing with the, the drones. Um, and we were going to stay one more day and, and they had to go out and do a, a, a little reconnaissance mission the following morning. And they did, but only one came back. Oh, wow. 12 of these guys lost their lives. And, and when this happens, you know, we, we were impacted so deeply because they they were feeding us and giving me coffee. And then they go out and 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 they were killed. Um so it's it's the reality. You can play this one. This is the reality. Oh, and by the way, I, I'm in much better shape now and ready for the front. I, 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 I was tired of losing my wind running from the missiles, so I'm ready now. Okay. Usually in America I drink one cup of coffee a day in the morning. Other than that, just come over here at these Boys and ladies, and you run these things, you drink coffee with these guys. And I'm going to be honest with you. Military coffee is the best coffee. It's getting better and better. We've had coffee everywhere we stopped today. But it's getting any better. If it gets any better than this, I mean, it's, we're next to heaven. You've got Russian planes. You've got IMRs. You've got 777s. You've got great people. And nice toilets. And you know what? Wonderful coffee. Good friends. God boxes? What else do you want? Know? Ukraine, help us. <laughs> it's next to heaven. Uh, unfortunately, the, now let me, let me, now on the spiritual side, let me tell you honestly, and, and you know, you and I have a lot of similar viewpoints on things as well, but uh, one of the greatest blessings is, you know, when these guys go out many times, I, I, we pray with them or they want us to read a psalm over them. And, um, you know, there's, there's, there's no better and no worse feeling that praying with somebody and then they go lose their life versus not praying with somebody and then they go lose their life. So it's, it's, it's very difficult, very, very difficult to deal with, but it, it, it's a blessing. Um, I'll give you one more look at the front here for reality. Mm -hmm. So reality is right now it's winter. Winter comes early in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. As we, uh, if you pay attention or you, you follow, you know, Dr. Gerdes or other streamers, you, you, of course you have to, because you're not going to get news anywhere else. Yeah. Um, but if you do, you do realize that winter did come a touch early and came very aggressively and it, it, it now will be terrible there weather wise, even if it warms up and then co goes cold again, it will be very terrible there all the way through April weather wise. That's, that's why I like to go January, February, March. Because it's the most difficult time. It's brutal. Um, and that's when I want to go to be the most help. But the winters are so difficult. And it's not just because of the weather, but it's also because of the infrastructure. And mm -hmm. when you're down on the front and you're running aid, you are literally driving on bombed out roads. You're driving on roads that have been shelled so bad. And then when a little ice or a little snow gets on them, you can't see the trouble spots. Mm. And there are lots of crashes. Oh. We, I'm going to, you're going to see this video now and we crashed and um, how we were not injured is a miracle mm. period. But at that time we were running a convoy and we were actually running over to Novia Vis, uh, Vis Novia Vasilka, which is right on the front line in Zaporizhia region. Mm -hmm. We were going in the early evening. We were running with some military vehicles. And all of a sudden, everybody lost control. And I mean, 21 military vehicles crashed and we crashed. Everybody in the fields, everybody flipping. Um, so if people want to see the reality of what Ukraine, Ukrainians, those there to help deal with every day between now and April, this is a, a good indication. We happened to crash into a shop owner, a shop, and the guy had surveillance cameras. So 
The military flips our vehicle back over and we have to get it hauled back to Zaporizhia with all the other military vehicles and get everything repaired. And we were stuck in Zaporizhia for five days. Um, we lost a lot of our aid. We had medical, we, we got it all recovered, but we were fully loaded. So, so much aid was exploded everywhere. And it, it, the shop owner came to us and they were helping us. And, and he says, man, I, I actually have surveillance cameras. So if you want to see your crash and what's going on, I'll just give you the video. So. So we're, we're loaded there. Yeah. You. <laughs> they just flipped us back over. Here we go. Everybody went out. I'm on the right side. Jania landed on me. And guys, there was not one scratch on us. We climbed out through the side yeah. door. Our phones didn't even go off the phone hangers. I mean, really, it was a miracle. Mm. You'll see. I'm, I want you to see this. The, the military. Their own vehicles are flipped and they're coming to get us first. Mm. Because they know we're, we're their volunteers. They come and they check our health and make sure everything's okay. And then they bring a huge old truck and they come and they flip us over. That's my partner there shaking hands with them. There's the big truck that will flip us over. I mean, it was within seconds. We hadn't even climbed out. and They're hooking it up. I'm over there the, in, the, in the background walking around. I'm a little rattled. Your vehicle, slipped o your, your vehicle slipped over and cruise missiles are flying over your head. Uh, they flip her back over. And I'm, now you'll see, I, I think I flipped to color here. And this is the footage from the surveillance. This is the. So. Look at the vehicle they're having to drive, man. No, no. All I can tell I asked you, him, was he okay? Of course, tonight, guys. The guy ended up in that field over there. He come out with a bloody head. Something happened here on the road. Cars went everywhere. We flipped over this embankment here. Launched past this metal pipe. Ended up into this building on the side. Military came, flipped us back over, made it about a hundred meters. Wow. Yeah, so that's that's reality. The, the, wow. This is the, this is reality, right here. Am I looking at this? Is shrapnel? Wow. Okay, you can't take that out of the country, um, but they let me because I told them they know what I do. So. Uh, you hear this going through the air, hmm. whistling. Uh, it's, it's it's reality. If you, if you want reality of the front, this is reality twenty four seven. Um, I I would throw into that the 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 most dangerous place in the war right now, and this is not where soldiers are battling, but I, I, for civilians. And, and I really, I want people to remember and, and not forget the city of Kherson. So Russia had occupied Kherson, then they backed up, went back across the river. And at that point, you know, I'm just going to tell you the truth here. Ukraine really didn't push them out of Kherson. No. Um, they retreated to establish a position to destroy that city. That was, a, that was a smart military move on. It was brilliant. Case. It was I mean, brilliant. Everybody came in, they shell it. Now, the problem is, it, every day, guy, I don't care if you see this or not, listen to me. Every day, hundreds of shells hit downtown Hedersan, and every day civilians die. Every day. Just think about that for a moment. That was their plan from the beginning. Hedersan, so we have... Um, Multiple bases of operation. I'm, we're based, our organization is based in Khmelnytsky, Ukraine, which is in Western Ukraine. We also have a launch point in Kiev, Ukraine. And basically what we do 
is we run the circuit. We have soldiers and friends in Chernigiv and Sumy, which is in the very northern region of Ukraine. By the way, you're not going to see this on the news. You're not going to hear this. We get this directly from our guys that are literally on the front. There is a lot of reconnaissance activity right now in Chernigiv and Sumy regions by uh, special forces from Russia that are coming in. They're sabotaging the Ukrainian military. They're killing the Ukrainian military. They are wow. setting up for a potential reinvasion of Chernigiv and Sumy region. You're not going to get that anywhere else, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you that's the truth. Then we also have a base of operations in Kharkiv. We have a base of operations outside of Bakhmut. We have a base of operations in Zaporizhia, and we have a base of operations in Kherson. Our place in Kherson, where we base, and when I say base, we stay there. Uh, we're 800 meters from the Dnipro River. We are shelled all night. We we have a place chosen specifically with certain walls that will protect us. We 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 feel com relatively comfortable there, but the Shahids, the reconnaissance drones. The artillery incoming is nonstop, and that's firsthand eyewitness. Um, so that's what we do. And in a 30-second nutshell, we load our truck. We load a trailer. We also do three shipments. We will send a, a shipment to the Kharkiv area where we can support places like Kupiansk, one of the most important battles right now, Kupiansk. Mm -hmm. We also send um, goods to like Pavlograd, where we can, or Dnipro, where we then can support the Bakhmut line and the Avdivka line. And yes, we have personal friends on the inside of Avdivka right this second. We have friends in um, Marinka right this second. Very, very, very difficult right now in those two places. Okay. Yes. And we also drop ship to Kherson or Mikolaev. So when we leave, we do a 10-day run and we unload on the north. We then hit the Nova Posta, which is the shipping, like a, a UPS, Nova Posta. And we go, they reload our vehicle with all of our aid. We deliver in that region. Then we go to our next load and pick up. So in our circle run, we will do four major drops of aid. Mm -hmm. And it's either food for people that have none, clothes for people that are freezing, but a lot of the aid right now, a majority of our aid is military aid. Mm -hmm. So at the same time, I'll give you another little piece here that's really interesting. So if you're approved um, officially, like we are, mm -hmm. <clears throat> yes, we're in full gear. Yes, we have our own weapons, just to tell you the truth, because you never know, especially with the collaborators on the front. So we're loaded. But when we're with the military, of course, we're in our full body armor. We never pull a weapon. We never pull a weapon. It's only there for security. It's tucked in a, in a it's a nice weapon. It's tucked in a certain place in our vehicle. But when we're with military, it's there. We never armed. Never. They are. But. If we need it when we're alone, we've got it because there is a mess out there. But since we're approved, another interesting thing that those organizations that are approved that are basically when you're approved, they know you're not a collaborator. They know that you're not uh, spreading pop propaganda and they know that you're not a Russian spy. That's what it means to be approved. Okay. You have to prove yourself. Um. So it, it, it's complicated, but really good. When that happens, we actually run military aid. And now we're not running, well, we, we do run some ammo occasionally for snipers, but a lot of what we run is actually drone pieces because a lot of the drones that Ukraine is manufacturing, there are a lot of volunteers that are out of work now that are like computer programmers, network engineers. These guys are in their basements or they're in their, their little apartments. They have 3D printers and they are building the additions that go on all of these awesome. drones. And we will go and we will pick up. They'll say, okay, we got 25 kits prepared. These go on the DGI threes and they will drop one grenade or it will drop a grenade and we'll carry one more reconnaissance camera or a night vision camera. They create them. We pick them up. And then as we're dip, dropping aid, 
we also drop the drone equipment. It's, it's awesome. really interesting. Yeah, very yeah. interesting how it works. Okay, so we're we're almost out of time. What's the last thing that you want to impress upon viewers? And how do they, if they want to contribute to what you're doing, how do they find you to do that? What's what's the best path? So, a thank you, thank you, Dr. Gerdes. And hey, thanks um, for being here. I mean, this is are a you kidding? Context I, that I couldn't I, possibly touch. Hey, we're, we're all one team, and that's yeah. what I would like to share. Is we're one team. Mm -hmm. Um, our, our little footprint here, it, it comes with your footprint and it comes with Johnny's footprint and I'm going to be connecting with Rick U Ukrainian. In fact, I'll, I'll connect with Rick when I'm in Ukraine, we'll get together. Um, but, you know, all these people that are trying to sh tell the truth and stand for goodness. And as Johnny Pierce would say, morality, um, you know, we stand for the right thing. So for me, the best thing that we always ask for is just help us share. So you can come to my YouTube channel, Greg Terry Experience, just subscribe and share. You're going to see a lot of this and you're going to see 26 years of experience that just knows Ukraine. And I, I speak very little Ukrainian a little bit, but I, I do speak Russian fluently. And, and by the way, this is not a war about language. Mm -hmm. And don't believe that trash. Over 50% of Ukrainian speakers, uh, Ukrainian military on the front lines are speaking Russian. And if I go into a store, even in Lviv in Western Ukraine, and I begin to speak Russian, the, the Ukrainian speaker will say, welcome and speak to me in Russian. It is not mm -hmm. about that. Of course, Ukraine wants their language. Of course, Ukraine wants their culture. That has nothing to do with this war. Zero. And <laughs> it's fighting for righteousness. So what I would ask for, you know, if you want to ever donate, that's great. What I can tell you is we have a secure donation link that's always in our description. And it actually runs through our nonprofit church and every admin fee, every if you give twenty five dollars to help Ukraine, twenty five is going right to the front. The other thing that that we we do is <laughs> kind of interesting. We promise you that if you give or you support or you share i mean even sharing the channel to somebody else is helping share the truth we promise you that we are going to give hand to hand so there are other places that you donate to and you, and and they're great organizations um but what we do is if you give through us you're going to see your gift hit the soldier's hand hit the person on the front line for the, for example, you know, I'm new to a lot of this, Dr. Gerardus, and I was streaming, uh, Monday night and I was live with my, with, uh, Genia. He had 4 a.m. for him. We, we were live and we always do a one hour live with the update. Mm -hmm. We ended up going two hours because about 45 minutes into the stream, one of Genia was talking about drones and, Explain to people how it all works. And a guy from Great Britain that was viewing put a super chat in there for 50 British pounds and said, I challenge us tonight to buy a drone. And even oh. my small group, everybody started giving and they raised enough money to buy two drones. <laughs> now, you say, well, if you give through YouTube, they're taking their cut. Yeah, they take their cut, but we make up for the cut with our organization. If you give 50 bucks, 50 bucks is going. It's not going somewhere else. Always. Yeah. That's because run through our church. Um, and, and to date, our small group, we've we've given five months of my time on the front line and pushing a quarter million dollars of aid. It, it's unbelievable. It's a miracle, to be quite honest. And what I promise you is this. Uh, it's going to be probably one of the few places where you'll actually buy a drone and then you're going to deliver it through us right to the soldier's hand and you will see it. So that's one of the things we love to do. And oh. it, it lets people know that, okay, I, I, I'm making a difference. Mm -hmm. I, I'm in Chicago. I'm in Australia. I'm making a difference. And so that's really that's important all we want to because do. 
The people that are watching this right now are very frustrated by not being able to feel like they're doing more, not being able to have a part in it. They're informing themselves, mm -hmm. but they need to actually do something useful in order to, to make that connection. And uh, so this it's incredible what you're doing here. Uh, what what last thoughts do you have for us? And, and we'll wrap up. Well, the, the last thought I would give would be very simple. I was in Washington, D.C. I was invited there a couple of months ago. I'm very close friends with a RADA member out of um, Ukraine and a lot of governmental people now, but um, who was best friends with Reznikov. And that's why when the Reznikov thing was happening, I was on top of it on my streams telling people the real truth about what happened with Reznikov. He's a really good man, a really good man. Mm -hmm. he, he's not corrupt. And, and we, we fought all that propaganda. But through those relationships, I received an invitation out of the blue to come to Washington, D.C. a couple of months ago. And I met it was a closed door meetings with Ukrainian military, the, the ambassador of Ukraine. We were in D.C. and also U.S. senators and U.S. House of Representatives. And they wanted to talk to people in a small group setting, A, for the military and for Ukraine, but also like a, a, a brainstorming session for those that had actually been on the front lines that spoke English or were Americans. And I was the only one there. There was just very, it, it's not about people that are streaming and sharing the truth, but there was, there's very few that have been there. there yeah. And I was there and they were asking me questions and we were talking about it and then represented, and I have full permission to share all of this. It's actually a video on my channel, Re representative of Indiana, Indianapolis, actually, Northern Indianapolis, Re representative Victoria Sparks. She's a great lady. She said, okay enough of this. Let me tell you the truth. I am in the Capitol. I'm a House of Representatives member. The senators are here. And I'm going to tell you today, and you can share this to the world, that there are many bills on our floor right now that are authored by Russian propaganda. Mm -hmm. They may come through the political avenues, but I'm telling you, they're authored by Russian propaganda, and some of those on the right and some of those on the left are going right down that rabbit hole because Russian propaganda runs the world. And this was point blank out of her mouth. And I asked her, I said, would you mind if I share that? She goes, not only share it, take a picture with me. I said it. And what I want to leave with people is do not give up. Yep. Do not Grow weary in well-doing because at the right time, we're going to reap a great harvest together. And the last thing, and the reason I told that little story there is for this, make sure you have a good source mm -hmm. and validate the things that you hear on the street, in the grocery store, in the church, and especially on Facebook yep. and the internet. Find good sources that you can trust. You don't have to agree with everybody politically. You do not have to agree with everybody socially, uh, religiously, any of those fears. But we can agree that this is egregious, that this is an evil dictator acting, creating a wave of genocide in Ukraine, and the world is literally watching it. We have to do our part. It's human. It's human. Greg, thank you so much for being here. And uh, I, I hope that a lot of the people that are viewing this right now will go immediately, drop what they're doing, go over to your Greg Carey experience on YouTube and uh, subscribe so that they can see ongoing what you're doing, all the good works that, that are being done. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate you and look forward to more stuff in the future. And I'll tell you this, um, I leave in, uh, well, <laughs> less than four weeks now. Definitely do a call into you from the front somewhere. Yeah, let's let's plan on doing that sometime. Absolutely. It's done. All right. Thank you. Slava Ukraina.